it's just stopped raining and I don't really fancy going up on the roof when all of the plywood's wet because I will definitely slip and fall. So instead, I'm gonna get on with making all of the furrings. Now, if you're not sure what furrings are, it creates a fall on your roof. At the moment, this roof is completely flat. And what that means is, well, it will do this. The water will just sit and soak into the roof. And that is a bad thing. Now for me, I want this side of the roof to be slightly higher than this side. And that will allow the water to flow from here all the way across to this back wall and then the plan is is to have a gutter system back here which will then collect all of that water and prevent it from being stagnant now it seems to me that a lot of places don't stock furrings anymore so because i'm getting four by two so cheaply i am going to make my own and to put it pretty simply all that is going to involve is me cutting diagonally across a piece of 4 by 2 For every one cut, you'll be gaining two furrings because you can use this piece here and then that piece there and you need one per ceiling joist. Also, I really need to start weeding because this soil heap has become a bit of a jungle. Now, if you're wondering why this is looking so much of a mess, it's because I do not care about the garden at this stage because I'll be hiring a digger in future because, well, I've got some pretty exciting plans. I've seen a few people suggesting getting solar panels. I do like that idea. So if anyone's got an experience with that, please comment below a cheap system and I might think about chucking it on the roof. I also have been looking into doing living roofs. I really like them at the moment and then use the whole ceiling space as a garden in future. And then I could put a diving board there going down into the swimming pool. And yeah, you heard that correctly. I have started drawing plans for a swimming pool. It's not really a swimming pool, but it, it kind of is. This is actually a little bit more challenging than it looks like because if you get a little bit of sawdust stuck in the template, that will then send you off from where the cut should be. And as you can see, just about there, you can see where I had gone off course a little bit and that's resulted in, well, none of them being exactly the same. The issue with filming absolutely everything that I do is you guys are slowly seeing how I do almost everything wrong or in questionable bodge job fashions. Now this isn't the end of the world. I can just recut this or plane it down to get them all exactly the same size. And in fact, I could kind of group the thinner ones all together on the left-hand side of the tiny house and the slightly wide ones all on the right-hand side. And therefore they won't go like this all the time. It'll be more of a constant fall of errors. But as with all of these sorts of tasks, you get good at it on the last one and then you don't have to do it for another six months before you buy another house. I don't mind admitting, 
I'm finding this pretty difficult. Also, the amount of dust that is created from cutting along the grain is actually insane. Didn't really expect it. And also, if you're wondering why I went and bought a new circular saw, that is because battery operated circular saws just can't really hack it through cutting a long grain. And that was only 40 quid and it works insanely well. It's a little bit too late to be making a lot of noise. So I will see you next Tuesday, no, uh, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Mondays and Thursdays around 5 p.m. That's when I've decided is going to be the times I upload. And hopefully, if I can get quicker at filming and editing, I will start uploading as well on Saturdays. That's gonna be quite challenging, but hopefully.